So yeah, so let's get started. We're just going to go through from this week's lesson about um, different types of measurement variables and then how we um, display them. So uh, our first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, histograms and dot plots. So these two are pretty similar in, um, in terms of the fact of like how they're displayed. So our um, measurement data displays are going to be the ones that have quantitative variables involved with them. So those are anything that has to do with um, the values attached to them. So um, things like, you know, um, amount of something, a weight, any decide, um, sort of like measurement in terms of like if you use a ruler or something, that's going to be a quantitative variable. And, um, and then a histogram and a dot plot are two ways to show that. And there are two ways to display those quantitative variables. And then also um, take note to the fact that they are basically the same, they're doing the same thing. You are gonna have like your, um, uh, your quantitative variable on the x-axis, but then on the y-axis there is always gonna be your count. But the difference between these two is basically that for a dot plot, you put each individual um, uh, variable that you find, each, um, sample that you take is going to go on here while in a um, histogram basically you add all of them up and then they're displayed you know within this bar so this this could in reality you know it is representing I guess like it looks like like 17 here um, but you know we can make this um, the y-axis any type of scale we want you know this can go up to like a thousand and you know if as long as we like present it correctly you know this could represent a thousand in this bar that's why histograms are better for um, larger data sets because you obviously would not want to put a thousand dots you know for a dot plot so um, and keep in mind for uh, histograms the bars do touch because it is quantitative um, so they can obviously share um, a spot on the number line and um, yeah and and in terms of the disadvantage that it is, um, observations aren't specified in a histogram, like I said, in the dot plot, um, we are gonna have the ones that are specified um, because like I said, each individual observation is shown here on the graph there. So those are two different types of measurement data displays there. And this is talking about, so when we talk about um, measurement data displays, we also talk about them in terms of their shape. Um, so these are just examples of the different shapes that we talk about. And they're not always gonna look exactly like this, but this is kind of like the general shape. So this is our, um, we also call this like the bell curve. Um, and this is basically our normal curve. This is symmetrical, it's a mirror image on either side. And then if you can see down here, we have the mean equals the median equals the mode. So mode that, which means that the average is the same as our middle number, which is the same as our most commonly occurring number, which is our mode there. Skew to the left just means the data is more spread out down here on the left side, and then skew to the right, it's more spread out on the right side. And that's why when it's skewed to the left, our mean's gonna be the smallest because um, more of the data basically is spread out down here on the left. And when it's skewed to the right, our mean is gonna be the largest out of these three because it's more spread out here on the right there. So that's um, just different ways that we describe data um, and then how we're able to talk about their shape. And so these are, um, two other types of measurement data displays that we can use, basically they are only, um, you know, it, they are both box plots, but um, we talk about in terms of, you know, how many variables we're talking about. So for just a, a box plot in general, this is once again for quantitative variables, and this is a good way to kind of break up your uh, values into quartiles. So if we're trying to, and also you'll see bo um, box plots often written sideways like this, um, same idea but they always are basically have the same thing. They have the same parts to it, which is why they're good because they're consistent. So you always have our minimum down here. We always have our maximum up here. And then we always have our quartile. So Q1, Q2, and Q3. And Q2 is also the same as our median. Um, so that's what that is. And we have then, and then this box in the middle is always gonna be our middle 50% of the data. And then this is gonna be 25% over here and then 25% here. So that's what I'm talking about, how it's a good way to display it um, and break it up into quarters or quartiles. Um, and it's another way we can do percentiles too. Um, so this is gonna be like our 25th percentile and then this will be our 50th. And then uh, Q3 is our 75th percentile. And percentiles are just saying the percent of the data that lies at or below that point. So you can see here for Q1, it's the 25th percentile, which means that 25% of the data, like I just drew here, lies at or below this point here. So that's where we get that from. Um, so that's just a good way that we can um, 
demonstrate our data in that way if we're interested in kind of grouping it together like that um, and not like individual observations. Um, and then a side-by-side -side box plot, really the only difference here is then if you're adding in basically um, another group. So here um, we have, you know, a normal box plot, but we're comparing looks like men and women. So this categorical variable here. Um, so we want to see the age um, between men and women. You want to compare them. And then this is a good way that we can compare it in terms of, you know, you can see like, oh, the, the median of women is higher than men, you know, and then same with the maximum is higher than men, you know, you can, this is a good way to like um, compare them and whatnot. So that's where we get that idea from. Uh, so that's the main difference. It's still a box plot, still all these rules up here that I drew apply, but um, we do have two different groups there, which is the main difference. Um, Okay, so uh, our five number summary and our IQR. So this is another way that we summarize data um, more objectively and just kind of in terms of the numbers themselves. So I just kind of went over all this, so I won't go too far into it, but that's what basically I just drew on the box plot um, that you can see. So, um, and remember what our percentiles, these are all the same thing, Q1, Q2, Q3. Um, remember Q2 is also the same as our median. Um, and then our interquartile range is represented, um, this is when I was telling you the middle 50% of the data um, lies within the box. That's also gonna be our IQR actually. So if we look here, um, our IQR is going to be from here to here. So this entire thing is gonna be our IQR because it's called the interquartile range. So if you remember, a normal range is just your maximum minus your minimum to get your normal range. But here for our interquartile range, we're trying to find the range within the quartile. So we're taking like the max of our quartile, which is Q3 and subtracting it um, by Q1. So that's why this is the equation that we use there. And that's gonna give you the range there from Q1 to Q3, which is the same thing as your interquartile range there. Um, so that's just another way that we use to describe data. All right, so let's try some review questions here. So we have, um, if a data set is skewed left, which of the following uh, preferred measures of center or location of the data? So go ahead and read these answers. Let me know what you think the answer is. You can type into the chat box and then we will review it together. All right, so remember when we did, let me draw this, when we were looking at the different shapes of the data. Um, so if we have something that's skewed left, remember it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna have our data more spread out down here um, on the left side, okay? So remember, um, our mode is always gonna be the most commonly occurring one, so our mode's gonna be wherever the hump in it is. So this is gonna be our mode. Um, but then we wanna keep in mind then that our, um, our mean is gonna be the, our, excuse me, our, this is what's gonna be the location of the, yeah, so, our, and then our mean is going to be the, um, the smallest one because that's where all the data is skewed towards. And then we have our median um, up here. So the situation they're asking, you know, what do you want to do for the center of the data? Um, you wanna use the, the most resistant statistic. Um, so the mean is down here because the mean is average. You like add up everything and then divide by the total. So um, the mean, the standard deviation, and the IQR are all dependent on um, the values within it. Um, the median is our answer because it's resistant to the values. You know, if I had numbers like four, um, six, 14, 21, and, and let's just say 25, if we, our median here would be 14. Um, but then if I were to change this number to, and then our mean would be something, but if I were to change this number to 1000, our median would still be 14, but our mean would change because we added a different number than 25. Because median is just, it's um, resistant to um, the data because it doesn't change depending on the value. It's, it just has a position there. Um, so, so that's why our answer would be A, because you want to use the center of the data that is gonna be the most resistant to any sort of change. That's, what, that the, that's the one that's gonna be uh, most consistent and um, give you the like, best like, center to it. Does that make sense how we got that? No. 
No? <laughs> okay. So. Thank you. Yeah, let me, so when, just in general, whenever you have skewed data, so you know when we had our symmetrical data, we just have our center. And remember, this meant that our mean is equal to our median, which is equal to our mode. Okay, so that means that all the things um, are equivalent to each other. That's why it's symmetrical. And it's the same thing on either side. But when we have something that's skewed, that means that the data is like pushed towards one side or the other, like those different graphs that we were looking at. And in order to have a more proper um, and like representative center of the data, you want to use a center that's not going to change because it's skewed. You want to use the one that's going to stay the same no matter what the values are. Because that the, me, the median is going to stay there. Given the fact that you don't add like extra um, numbers like on either end, it's going to stay the same because it doesn't matter how like how big how much like skewed to the left it is it can get even more skewed if you like make an even smaller number at the end but the median is going to stay the same so then your center is going to be a little bit more um it'll make a little bit more sense then does that make sense yeah it's making sense all right, all right cool all right let's try another one so um, my mom was told that her one-year-old son's checkup in his height was in the first or lower quartile. What does this mean? So try to interpret basically what the uh, first quartile means, and then we'll go over it together. Great job. Yeah, you guys are you guys are correct. Let me sorry. I like messed up my screen. You guys are correct. Their answer is gonna be D here. Um, because when we're talking about quartiles, we're talking about um the percent of the data that's at or below um that value. So if we were to draw this out um on a box plot, which is what we often use to describe quartiles, um this means that so her son was at the first quartile, so Q1. And then Q1 is um, that it's in the 25th percentile. So according to that, that means that 25% of the data is going to be at or below Q1. Okay. So then that means that 25% of one-year-old boys are shorter than her son, which means that they are less than um, than to the left there. So good, you guys got that okay. one right. People usually struggle with that one, so you guys are geniuses. All right. So, all right. Let's try <laughs> this one. <laughs> Um, so for a symmetric data set, the proportion of the data that falls at or below the mean is about what? So try this one out and then we will go over it together. Okay. Okay, so keep in mind here that, where's my pen going? Okay, so we have a symmetric data set. Uh -huh. So that means that it's going to be the same on, here we go, let me draw this. That means it's symmetric. It's gonna be, uh, yes, it's A, yep, good job. <laughs> yeah, so um, that means that it's the same on either side. So if it is the same on either side, and this, assuming that this entire, Thing makes up 100%, that means that 50% does have to be on either side, okay, in order for it to mathematically make sense. So, um, and then if it's symmetric, that means that your mean is dead center here. So then 50% of your data is lying um, at or above the mean, because technically this is the 50th percentile, which also means that 50% is lying at or below the mean. But then if you obviously do the math the other way, it's also 50%. So our answer would be A there. Does that make sense how we got that? 
yeah it does this yeah it's maybe it's the, the way the question is phrased that's mm -hmm. why i got confused but you're yeah. right yeah i know sometimes they're a little weird but you always want to kind of go through and you know take each part you know take it all apart so for a symmetric data set so then draw out a symmetric data set and then the proportion of the data that falls at or above the mean so then draw your mean and then add or above and then you can like go from there you know like take it step by step don't read it all together and then try to interpret it you know just do it in pieces and i think that'll help the most there all right all right, so which of the following statements is true here? So um, if data are skewed to the left, that means that there's a bias in the results, the data are lower than they should be. If data are skewed to the left, but then the higher values are more spread out than the lower values, or if data are skewed to the left, then the lower values are more spread out than the higher values. So let me know which one of these you think is true, and then we will review it. Okay, good. Yeah, so the answer to this one is going to be C, because if we draw out our data set, um, this is all talking about left skewed data set, a left skewed, well, that doesn't, it doesn't really look like it here. <laughs> Let me do this again. A left skewed data set's going to look more like this, so it's more spread out down here on the left side. Um, so since it's um, more spread out on the left side, that means so if a data set is skewed to the left, then the lower values are more spread out than the higher values. So that's why C is the right answer, because these are going to be our lower values. And as you can see, they are more spread out here um, than up here. They're more like scrunched together. So our answer is C there. Good job. All right. So that's all the reviews we got for tonight. So um, you can obviously go check out this review and the other ones online um, at the YouTube channel. So you can rewatch those um, to get more practice. And if you want to rewind and everything, um, our next group review will be for our next lesson on next Thursday, February 1st at 830. Um, and I think everyone gave me their Penn State email. Um, if you haven't already, just go ahead and type that in the chat box. Um, and if you guys have any other questions, let me know. If not, you're good to go for tonight. You're very welcome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you have a great night. You too. Thank you. Yep.